In this video, I'll talk about wired and wireless networks. Wired networks are faster than wireless networks that transmit signals through the air. They're also considered more secure since it's harder to physically gain access to wired transmission media than it is with signals going through the air. Now with wired networks, wiretaps are possible. However, physical access to the cables is required. With wireless networks, we have slower connection speeds than we do with their counterpart, wired networks. They're considered less secure than wired, and malicious users don't need physical access to network gear in order to tap into wireless signals because they're flying through the air. As long as they're within range and they have the right equipment, they can capture that traffic as it's being transmitted. Wireless networks also include cellular, where the infrastructure is owned by a telecom carrier. Bluetooth wireless networks are a personal short-range wireless technology that are used for things such as wireless keyboards, wireless mice, media devices like Bluetooth speakers that you can hook your smartphone up to without cables, as well as wireless headsets and so on. The Wi-Fi standard is what most of us are using at home in our personal networks, although you will see it in the enterprise also when secured properly. It has a longer range than Bluetooth. Of course, it's very convenient for users to connect to a Wi-Fi network. However, the downside is it's easy for malicious users to configure a rogue hotspot. Now, a rogue hotspot is what appears to be a legitimate hotspot that users can connect to on their wireless network, but really it's been set up by a malicious user to capture that type of connectivity information that a wireless client is transmitting. IEEE has numerous standards, including the 802.1x standard, not to be confused with the 802.11 Wi-Fi standard. This is different. 802.1x isn't specifically for wireless, but it can be used with wireless. But what is it? It's a security standard. With 802.1x, we configure our network such that authentication is required prior to being given network access. This is called Network Access Control, or NAC, N-A-C, for short. WEP stands for Wired Equivalent Privacy. This is a wireless security standard as well. And it's an encryption standard, but it's been deprecated for many years now because it's been proven to be easily exploited with freely available tools in a matter of seconds. WPA stands for Wi-Fi Protected Access. This supersedes the WEP deprecated encryption standard. It uses TKIP, which stands for Temporal Key Integrity Protocol, where we have a changing key either on a timed basis or every so many packets, for instance, every 10,000 packets, to make it harder to crack the key. It is superseded by WPA2, Wi-Fi Protected Access Version 2. This gets enhanced by using AES, or Advanced Encryption Standard, 256-bit encryption. Now, WPA and WPA2 can run in either enterprise mode, where a centralized RADIUS authentication server authenticates user access to the network. So, in other words, the wireless endpoints, the wireless access points and routers, aren't doing the authentication. They're just handing it off to the RADIUS server. That's WPA and WPA2 Enterprise. The personal equivalences for WPA and WPA2 simply use a pre-shared key that is configured on the wireless access point or router, and that same key must be entered when a client wishes to connect to that WLAN. Now, having a centralized RADIUS authentication server is part of the overall IEEE 802.1x security standard. So how can we harden wireless networks since they are much more susceptible to attacks than their wired counterparts? One way is to disable the SSID broadcast. The SSID is the name of the wireless network, and with most wireless networks, that's being transmitted for ease of connections from people that want to connect to the network because they just scan the vicinity for wireless networks, they see the name, they click on it. However, if we've disabled the SSID broadcast, it doesn't show up. So this means that people have to type in the name of the wireless network, often it's case sensitive, before they can connect. Additionally, a password is usually required as well. We can also enable MAC address filtering on our wireless network. What this does is allow us to either build a list of allowed or denied MAC addresses. 
Now a MAC address is a layer 2 address according to the OSI model. It's the 48-bit hex address tied to a physical network card of some kind. Normally what's done on a wireless network is we add a list of allowed MAC addresses. So if your device has a wireless card with a MAC address that matches the allow list, you're allowed to at least attempt to connect to the wireless network because usually there's also a passphrase or, or WPA2 enterprise where there's a radius server that you also have to authenticate to. Just bear in mind that MAC addresses are very easily spoofed with freely available tools. Another way to harden a wireless network is, of course, to use WPA2 Enterprise. So that authentication isn't done by the wireless access point or router. Instead, it just forwards it off to a central radius server. We could also consider disabling DHCP because with DHCP being enabled on a wireless network, once people connect to the network, we're giving them a valid IP configuration. That's just one more thing that could make it more difficult for a malicious user to gain access to the network. We should also enable HTTPS administration so that we don't have clear text type of transmissions when admins are connecting over the network to the wireless router or access point to administer it. So we should use HTTPS where possible. Of course, we should patch wireless router firmware. Most of us know that we should be patching software all the time, but what about firmware? Especially in wireless routers, there have been numerous cases where there have been security vulnerabilities found in router firmware for wireless networks. So be sure to always keep up to date, maybe subscribe to vendor websites for your wireless router equipment to make sure you know when there's a new firmware update. Here you're looking at the configuration page in a web browser for an ASUS wireless router. Now here under the system status section over on the right, we can see there's a drop-down list for authentication methods for the wireless network. Open means it's not secured at all. Here it's set to WPA2 personal, where down below it's using AES encryption and we can see there is a pre-shared key or a PSK that's configured here on the wireless router. People would have to know that to make a connection from their desktops, laptops, smartphones, and so on. But from the authentication method list, I could also choose WPA2 Enterprise, where I would use a centralized authentication server, a radius server, other than the authentication being done here on the wireless router. At the same time, if I were to click on the wireless advanced settings over on the left with this particular model, now the menus will differ depending on your wireless router, but over on the right, I have the option to hide the SSID or not. Notice here it's set to no, which means that it is broadcasting the SSID. Anyone within proximity, within range of my wireless network will see the name being broadcast. Now the name, if we go back to the network map section over on the left, we can see here the name of this wireless network is LinkSys 5 gigahertz. So that would be seen because it's not been suppressed from being broadcast. Now over on the left, if I were, for example, to click on LAN, now when I do that, it opens up a new menu system where, for instance, I could go onto the DHCP server tab and disable DHCP. Currently it's set to yes, it is currently enabled. If I scroll down and choose the administration menu link down on the left, and remember, these menu links and these interfaces are going to change even when you apply a firmware upgrade to your current router. I have the option of going to the firmware upgrade tab where I could see currently what version we're using and also I would have to specify, of course, the new firmware file that I want to apply to my wireless router. And on the left, back under wireless one more time, we can see we have a wireless MAC filter tab where we could specify which specific MAC addresses, if I choose yes to turn that on, should be allowed to connect to this wireless network. In this video, we talked about wired and wireless networks.